But yeah, Tyson Fury, should he retire? Joking, football chance aside. Um, yeah, George Grove suggested it. And what we put in the, the headline and the, um, the teaser on social media was that after struggling to defeat a guy in his first professional boxing match, albeit a very skilled combat artist, uh, in Francis and Garnu, and then seeing the pay per view numbers, which have been reported, they haven't been confirmed as they rarely are, but it's looking like what was it, 11,500 pay per view buyers in the US, and something like just over 60,000 watching the stream on ESPN, Plus, which has got to be incredibly disappointing for everyone involved. Eamon, how surprised were you by this? Uh, I sort of was, but then sort of kind of listening to people within the US side of the industry when it comes to pay-per-views which land around 3 p.m. in the US where people don't really care for watching uh, sports other than the NFL or whatever it is they like over. I know it's not boxing or combat sports, even if it's MMA, even the leading MMA uh, pay-per-views don't do too well at that sort of time. It kind of gives context as to why the pay-per-view numbers didn't land as much as uh, they probably we probably thought of beforehand. I'm interested to be hearing what the pay-per-view numbers are for the UK pay-per-view sales, if we can get yes. those from Frank in the future, if they're released. That's a better indication of what, what really kind of went down. But truly... If we're being honest about this, this was never about pay-per-view sales, really. This is about launching off their Riyadh season, launching off it with a big bang. You got that big bang there with Fury and Ngannou. Uh, it is a shame it didn't really kind of land over there in the US where Fury has been present in the US in terms of fights in the last few years. Surely to make a big deal of Riyadh season, and obviously there's the elements of sports washing, if all that's going to be successful, isn't it the more eyes, the better? The more people that are aware of it, the better. Oh, absolutely. Definitely. But there was only so much they could do with the fact that they had to put this out at their prime time over in Saudi sure. and then cater to whatever market. Luckily, it, it was it was good for us because we were over here at like 9 p.m., 10 p.m., whatever it was, good prime time for us. But the U.S., they had to kind of give up that market in that sort of sense because of what they had to do over their side of the pond. So that's kind of the detriment of it all. So that's where those figures come through, as well as we'll give Dave, Mel Dave Meltzer some shine I'm not too sure about Dave Meltzer's figures. I'm not saying he's wrong, but for me, if I'm looking for a source, I'll be looking to double down and get my figures doubly tight, sure, with another source to know that they're correct. Because Dave can sometimes, with respect to Dave, be a little bit spotty. Yeah. I mean, do you remember when Cop was reporting loads of stuff before anyone else knew about it, including figures, but they were always about one particular promoter and people started asking questions. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying Dave's, you know, doing anything nefarious here, but yeah, I think you're right to to kind of take a wait and see approach on that. Um, Thunder Road is here. Um, I saw a quick uh, message in the chat just now where he said, uh, Liverpool draw at Ken Kenilworth Road and Danny's in a football mood. Uh, Eamon and I were talking about the match actually just before we came live. So all I've got to say to that is Libertador para Papa, unless he's already been released, of course. I have been keeping up to date today. Um, but our thoughts are with Luis Diaz and his family. Um, but yeah, let's get into some of your comments. Uh, they're flying through actually. So I'm might need to scroll up a bit just so people don't get lost. Um, 50 Cent. I'd love it if it was the real one, but I, can't, I mean, he's got a boxing, boxing relationship, hasn't he? He says, but to me, Fury is boring compared to Tank and Bud. Maybe it is 50 Cent. Now I've read the uh, content of the comment. Uh, even Shakur is better to me. That's definitely 50 Cent. Uh, the reality filter says Floyd spent his entire career ducking and cherry picking to get to 50 and 0. Uh, there's Thunder Road's comment about the football. Who else? Michael says, you can't moan at him and ask him to stay. He's the only fighter who gets ripped and mocked for winning. I'm not sure who he's talking about there. I haven't followed the thread. Thunder Road, Danny got a nice trim. He'll surely be in the club this week. Beautiful. Never gets old, uh, like me. Tommy Fumble sells more tickets, says the reality filter. Uh, North London, USA MMA fans expected to buy the fight. It was their UFC star doing an exhibition event. Yes. It's interesting how much the time difference may have an impact, as Ames was alluding to, and also how big a crossover star is Francis and Garnu. Because I think Eamon was making the point in the build-up to this um, show, so maybe two weeks ago on this uh, podcast, that it was down to Fury. He was the one doing all the selling, and Garnu was expected to be the foil. So I'm not sure how much they were expecting from Ngarnu. Uh The reality field says Usyk felt sorry for him. I think Usyk probably felt sorry for himself where he saw the, you know, multi-million pound undisputed fight potentially 
going by the wayside. Uh, Dennis Baktov, again, I'd love it to be the real one, says, oh, can Eddie Hearn say Fury should retire after almost losing to Francis and then try to get the AJ fight? If Fury should retire for scraping through Francis, what does it prove if AJ smashed through him? I think Eddie, in this case, unashamedly, is looking at the dollar signs or the pound signs, if you like, and thinking, you know, AJ will run right through and Garnu, and when he does, it's a minimum risk fight for maximum reward money-wise, and then people won't be going on and on at AJ to fight Deontay Wilder for a bit. Uh, North London, Eddie, oh, there we go. Eddie ignoring Wilder again. He wants Francis versus AJ, kind of what I just said. Uh, oh, SW Boxing, Steve Wellings is here. Yes, lads, UK branch of the LDBC checking in. We love the LDBC. If you don't know what it is, Google it. I think I had to search it on Twitter um, when I first found out a couple of years ago now, but I'm old. What's your excuse? Uh, the reality feel a world has never been a top 15 guy. WBC is a joke. Adam Hurley, Fury should retire before he gets caught running for Gilet Zhang. Listen, I like Gilet Zhang. I think he's a really good heavyweight, but I'm not sure he's going to catch anyone in a running race. Um, right. WM Boxing Views, we thank you for our super chat. This is becoming a bit of a habit. Now, we try and read as many of your comments as we can, but if you want to absolutely guarantee that your comment gets read out, please do donate some of that hard-earned dough and give us a super chat. WM Boxing News says, Fury should not rob us of seeing him get absolutely schooled and potentially even stopped. It would be better than Christmas. Wow. Maybe we'll do it at Christmas. No, I think he's already said he's not fighting until next year, hasn't he? But I do love Christmas, actually. A bit of an aside. I won't go into too much detail, but I'm a big, big fan of Christmas. You wouldn't think it. I'm more of a Scrooge character, but I do like Christmas. Uh, Ma Matthew Leach says, Fury is by far the best heavyweight when he's fit and focused. We need to see him put AJ to sleep and knock out Usyk to cement his legacy. Jack Dutton, whether the Ngannou fight was evidence of a Fury decline or not, and we still don't know that, Fury needs to take the Usyk fight regardless. It's an era-defining fight. Yeah, but would you want your legacy to be defined by a loss, particularly against someone you've mocked for their small stature in the past? That's the, that's the big question, isn't it? Uh, S. Clayton, hopefully Simon Clayton. The irony, last week Fury shouting Joshua is down, done. Now the poor lifestyle choices have caught up with Frank's son and Danny's bro. <laughs> if that was my actual bro, you might have a point. I hope he's not watching. Um, who else have we got? So last one before we move on. Jeffrey Riberich says Derek Lewis should fight Fury and tie Tuvesa. Yeah, maybe. Tuvesa versus Fury would be entertaining for the fans. That's another crossover fight we can consider, I suppose. We'll come back to some more of your comments in due course. But I guess the question I want to put to you, Eamon, is if we're not saying he should retire because of the comparatively poor performance on pay-per-view, how much of Fury's performance against Ngannou, and we covered this a little bit last week, is down to him not taking him seriously, maybe not having a great camp, et cetera, et cetera, adjusting to someone who's very awkward, which I know has been mentioned by a couple of trainers um, who've talked about the Fury fight. And how much of it do we think, because we don't know for sure, is down to some sort of irreparable slide, as I know Shane McGuigan was one of the many who suggested. I caught um, a little bit of a clip of something. It was from uh, BBTV, British Boxers TV. I'll give a little bit of credit to them, a little clip. It was interesting from Shane Fury. So his brother, uh, Shane, who's been in the camps and camps and camps with, with Tyson. And there's a little clip of uh, Shane saying, Tyson is the worst champion you can get, not in the sense of being a champion, but in the sense of being someone who defends their belts and keeps their level high. He's a great getter. He's a great chaser. If you're using wrestling terms, he's a great chaser of the belts. But when you you love that chase, you want that chase and then getting it and keeping it, uh, defending it, that's a bit of an issue. Keeping those levels high, that's a bit of an issue. Against someone who you maybe are expected to beat, that's a bit of an issue. Like we've seen with Wallin, like we've seen in other performances, that's a bit of an issue. Is that that real kind of cliche, cliche phrase of, um, you know, fighting to a level of, a, of an opponent? I know that he's kind of said, look, we did a 12 week training camp and we we took our opponent seriously. But the truth of the matter is that might have been physically. But what about up here? Do we know that? Can we understand that when everyone's telling you, oh, this should be easy when the media when we're kind of writing people off and saying, is this? Is this the guy that you should be fighting right now? Does that slip into your mind? Or is it the, the potential of right now that he is a little bit on the decline, as, as some trainers are mentioning? He maybe should retire, as George Groves is potentially say, saying. Let's 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 take that little argument for a second quickly here. If we're saying he should retire, we're putting it out there. Why why would you not retire? 
considering the fact that you've got 150 million in the bank, you've got all your faculties, you're now a bona fide star with a Netflix series, have been on ITV with your series, have highlight reels upon highlight reels of moments in boxing that you've made. Why not? Why not put it out there after maybe you've done Undisputed? Thank you.